Now, once again, welcome to Dr. Ahmad Zahid Memorial Lecture Series. I, first of all, welcome Principal Dr. Mazhar Ahmad Farooqi for the today's seminar. IPSC Coordinator Aditi Bhattacharya, Professor and Head Department of Microbiology, Dr. Muhammad Abdul Bahari, Vice Principal Malan Azad College, and my esteemed colleagues in the institution and dear students. Once again, welcome to today's lecture. First of all, I would like Shaibaz Khan to introduce the today's resource person, Dr. Ifra Fatima. Good evening to all. Hello. Yes, continue. <clears throat> Good evening to all. I have a great pleasure to introduce our today's guest speaker in Dr. Ahmed Zahir lecture series, Dr. Sheikh Ifra Fatima, Assistant Professor in Maulana Azad College of Arts, Science and Commerce, Aurangabad having teaching experience of seven years. She is very hardworking, dynamic lady. She is university gold medalist in the subject of physics at graduation level. She has completed her master degree from Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Marathwada University, Aurangabad. She got her PhD degree in the year 2017. For the research work, on fractals, she is active in research activity. Her contribution in the research field related with topic fractals, microwaves, geometric science, astrophysics, etc. is appreciable. In her career, she has published her work in several national and international journals. To her credit, she is having two patents in her extensive work on IR sensors and internet-based system. This is brief introduction of Dr. Sheikh Ifra Fatim. Thank you. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Shabha, sir, uh, for uh, introducing me to the viewers. Uh, first of all, I would like to share my screen with all of you. Okay. Respected principal, Dr. Mazhar Ahmed Farooqi sir, Vice Principal, Dr. Amy Bari sir, Program Convener of Dr. Ahmed Zahir Lecture Series, Dr. Arif Pathan sir, Program Coordinator, Dr. Sayed Sultan sir, IQAC Coordinator, Dr. Aditi Bhattacharya ma'am, Faculty Members and Students, Good evening to one and all. First of all, I would like to express my sincerest gratitude to the organizing committee for uh, giving me an opportunity to be a part of this lecture series. The topic that I have chosen for today's lecture is microwave and its application. The main objective of uh, today's lecture is to have an introduction of electromagnetic waves to get familiarized with the characteristics of uh, electromagnetic waves, electromagnetic spectrum and applications. The very first question that comes to my mind when I listen to the word electromagnetic wave is that what is a wave? 
to have a sense of wave, I want to quote an example first. If we throw a stone in a pond or any stagnant water, we can see water moving up and down in the form of ripples and in the shape of circular rings. These rings are moving uh, forward from the center where the stone is dropped and they move towards the periphery of the pond. These are nothing but waves. So waves are nothing but oscillatory disturbances in the medium. Wave motion is an important mode of transfer of energy. It does not carry away the particle with it. It here the particles of the medium only vibrate about their mean position. So these are the basic things which we should know about a wave. Next, wave are of three types: mechanical waves, matter waves, and electromagnetic waves. The waves which require material medium for their propagation are called as mechanical waves. Water waves, sound waves are all mechanical waves. These waves cannot travel through vacuum. So these are categorized as mechanical waves. The next are the waves which uh, um, arise due to the motion of fundamental particles like electrons, protons, neutrons. So these waves are called as matter waves. And these waves are also named after the scientist. He is a very famous scientist, de Broglie. So the name given to these waves are de Broglie waves. Next, there are some types of waves which do not require any material medium for their propagation. Uh, that means they can travel through vacuum. And these waves are nothing but electromagnetic waves. Radio waves, light waves, microwaves are all electromagnetic waves. So what are basically electromagnetic waves? Electromagnetic waves are those waves in which electric and magnetic fields are perpendicular to each other and both are perpendicular to the direction of propagation. As you can see in this figure, electric field is along y-axis, magnetic field is along z-axis, and the wave is propagating along y-axis. Uh, sorry, x-axis. Let us have uh, some basic knowledge of uh, how these electromagnetic waves come into existence. Sir J.C. Maxwell has proposed the theory of electromagnetic waves. He was of the opinion that electric and magnetic fields can be coupled together to form electromagnetic waves. Later, after 20 years, a German scientist, Heinrich Hertz, experimentally showed the existence of electromagnetic waves. For this, he developed electromagnetic waves of about six meter in length. And uh, with the help of uh, oscillating electric spark, he produced these electromagnetic waves. Then again later, an Italian scientist, Marconi, with more sensitive detectors, extended this range of electromagnetic wave re uh, reception. Let us see some properties, or we can say the prominent properties of electromagnetic waves. We have already seen that electromagnetic waves are uh, those waves in which electric and magnetic fields are perpendicular to each other, and both are perpendicular to the direction of propagation, thus giving us the sense that these waves are. Uh, transverse in nature. 
these waves are produced by accelerated charges these waves do not require any material medium for their propagation that means they can travel through vacuum and this doesn't means that it cannot uh, flow through any uh, material medium like solid liquid or gas iska matlab ye nahi hota hai ki इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेव सिर्फ वैक्यूम में से पास होते हैं एज वी आर मोर इम्फोसाइसिंग ऑन द थिंग दैट दे कैन ट्रेवल थ्रू वैक्यूम दे कैन ट्रेवल थ्रू वैक्यूम ऑल्सो थ्रू सॉलिड्स ऑल्सो थ्रू लिक्विड्स ऑल्सो एंड थ्रू गैसेस ऑल्सो ओके एंड वी हैव सी इन लाइट द रिलेशन बिटवीन विलोसिटी फ्रीक्वेंसी एंड वेव लेंथ इज गिवन एज सी इज इक्वल टू एन लैमडा Uh, in uh, this e equation holds good for electromagnetic waves also because um the light is nothing but an electromagnetic wave if a wave is propagating or traveling through free space the velocity of that electromagnetic wave can be given as c is equal to 1 upon under root mu not epsilon not where mu not is the permi permeability of free space and epsilon not is permittivity of that free space and the value of this velocity if we calculate uh, we get that it is equal to 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second that is the velocity of light so there also we can show that the light waves are nothing but electromagnetic waves further uh, it is seen that when an electromagnetic wave is uh, traveling along any material medium then the velocity of this electromagnetic wave will be given as cm is equal to 1 upon under root mu epsilon where mu is permeability of that medium and epsilon will be the permittivity of that medium next uh, we know that elect in electromagnetic waves electric and uh, uh, magnetic field variations are perpendicular to each other as well as they are also in phase with each other that means they will attain their maximum point at the same time in the same place if an electromagnetic wave is incident on any surface then that electromagnetic wave will exert a pressure on that surface and this pressure is called as radiation pressure also electromagnetic waves obeys the principle of superposition of waves thus suggesting us that these electromagnetic waves can possess the properties of uh, waves such as uh, reflection refraction interference diffraction and etc let us see how we can show that the electromagnetic waves are transverse in nature we know that uh, there are uh, two natures of a wave wave can be longitudinal wave or uh, it can be a transverse wave we are calling electromagnetic waves are transverse wave so how we can say that electromagnetic waves are transverse in nature we will uh, see in this section so uh, as you can see in the diagram uh, the electromagnetic wave is uh, traveling along x axis uh, the field electric field uh, variations are along the uh, y axis and the magnetic field variations are along z axis the time dependent electric field can be represented by the equation e is equal to e not sin of omega t minus kx where e not is the amplitude of electric field omega is the um, frequency is the angular frequency and k is the propagation constant uh, this propagation vector is having the magnitude equal to 2 pi by lambda 
the time dependent magnetic field can be represented by the formula vector b is equal to b not sin of omega t minus kx where again b not is the amplitude omega is the angular frequency and k is the propagation vector so from these two equations we come to conclusion that the electric and magnetic field vectors oscillate with same frequency and they attain their maximum and minimum values at same time and same place where we can say that they are in phase with each other so the term in phase is coming thus we can say that the electromagnetic waves are nothing but transverse wave or we can say that they are transverse in nature then uh, here comes the electromagnetic spectrum on the basis of different wavelengths and frequencies we are categorizing different electromagnetic waves in all we are calling it as electromagnetic spectrum so basically it covers a wide range of wavelength or frequency as you can see in this diagram there are no sharp division between two kinds of wave and the next the overlapping in certain part of the spectrum shows that the particular wave can be produced by different methods that is we can briefly describe these different parts of electromagnetic wave in a order of increasing wavelength or decreasing frequency so as you can see here in this diagram the electromagnetic spectrum consists of gamma rays x rays ultraviolet rays visible light infrared microwaves and long radio wave so we are going to discuss about uh, um, each of these uh, sections one by one so here first comes the gamma rays gamma rays are uh, produced by the emission of um emission by the atoms of radioactive elements like uranium radium etc the frequency range of gamma rays is from 5 into 10 to the power 20 to 3 into 10 to the power 18 hertz the wavelength ranges from 3 into 10 to the power minus 18 minus 13 to 1 into 10 to the power minus 10 meter the properties of gamma rays are they are having very high penetration power they can produce fluorescence when incident on fluorescent substance they possess high uh, moderate ionizing power and they can kill living cells on which they are incident so here comes the application of it that it can be used to treat cancer in cancer patients so gamma rays are used to check how much cancer has spread in that patient or how well the treatment is going on in that patient or how much the treatment is progressing in that patient gamma rays are used in pet scan also pet scan is a positron emission tomography scan uh, this pet scan is a higher version of ct scan it is an image uh, nuclear imaging tool to detect early signs of cancer heart diseases and brain disorders uh, gamma rays are also uh, used in uh, bloodless surgeries of brain um, by using gamma knives that uh, that gamma knives are nothing but highly focused gamma rays um, by using this the brain tumors and any abnormalities are treated the next comes x rays 
एक्सरेज वेव फर्स्ट डिस्कवर्ड बाय रोइंजन इन एटीन नाइंटी फाइव वेन इट इज प्रोड्यूस वेन अ फास्ट मूविंग इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर सडनली स्टॉप बाय अ सॉलिड मेटल टारगेट ऑफ हाई एटोमिक नंबर so these uh, rays are having wavelength in the range 1 into 10 to the power minus 10 to 3 into 10 to the power minus 8 meter the frequency range of these rays are 3 into 10 to the power 18 to 1 into 10 to the power 16 hertz the prominent characteristics of x rays are they can ionize the gas through which it passes they can produce fluorescence on which they are incident on a fluorescent substance and they can kill living or uh, plant tissue so that is why long exposure of x rays is very harmful to the health so ek we are all aware of that x ray photographs are used to detect the Uh, fractures in bones or any presence of foreign body like a bullet or hidden metal in the human body and uh, these uh, x rays are used to study the crystal structure to to identify the original diamond or precious stone from the artificial one uh, and uh, these x rays are used to in the treatment of some skin diseases and x rays also destroys tumors also and in industries x rays are used to detect flaws or cracks in the metallic part of uh, the product which they are producing next comes the ultraviolet light ultraviolet light are the are uh, the rays emitted by extremely hot bodies such as electric arc or electric furnace these wavelengths are of shorter uh, wavelength than that of violet light hence the name given ultraviolet rays okay and these wavelengths uh, these waves are having wavelength in the range 3 into 10 to the power minus 8 To four into ten to the power minus seven meter. These wavelengths have frequency in the range three into ten to the power sixteen to eight into ten to the power fourteen hertz. The properties of the ultraviolet rays are: they can affect the photographic plate. They can also produce fluorescence. They cannot pass through glass. but can pass through some uh, uh, special uh, glass like quartz glass or uh, some other material like rock salt etc sun is an important source of ultraviolet rays the ultraviolet light in a large quantity can have harmful effects on human health so these are the properties of ultraviolet light now let's see Uh, some applications of these rays these rays are mostly and uh, importantly used in uh, sterilizing surgical instruments so in medicine uh, it has a large application in uh, and use because in most of the hospitals also in um, large setup where is there uh, they use this uh, ultraviolet rays for sterilizing the surgical instruments and uh, equipments uh, they are also used to study the molecular structure uh, they are a huge source of vitamin d which makes our uh, bones stronger and teeth stronger they are also used in burglar alarms uh, detectives also uses this fluorescent powder to produce ultraviolet light uh, and uh, it glows to find fingerprints next comes the visible light this is a very small part of the entire electromagnetic spectrum 
our human eyes are sensitive to electromagnetic waves having wavelength in the range 4 into 10 to the power minus 7 to 8 into 10 to the power minus 7 meter that is frequency range from uh, 8 into 10 to the power 14 to 4 into 10 to the power 14 hertz therefore this range is called as visible light because they these this is the only elect, uh, range in the electromagnetic spectrum which we can see okay so this uh, uh, spectrum or this part of the spectrum consists of seven colors that is red yellow blue green violet okay all the seven colors we can see in this spectrum right from red to violet and uh, the wavelength of red color is maximum and the wavelength of violet color is minimum next comes the infrared rays all the hot bodies are the source of infrared rays infrared rays are produced by all hot bodies when infrared rays are incident on any object the object get heated so hence they are sometimes called as um, heat waves these waves have a wavelength ranging from 4 into 10 to the power minus 7 to 3 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter whereas the frequency ranges from 4 into 10 to the power 14 to 1 into 10 to the power 12 hertz now let's see some applications of uh, infrared light infrared lamps are used in physical therapy in medicine thermograms are taken which are nothing but special infrared photographs which show that uh, the um, which part of the body is not working because uh, the body which is not working properly will radiate less heat than the healthy parts so Uh, for investigation purpose doctors may recommend to take thermograms next uh, comes the uh, infrared detectors which are implemented in satellites for military purposes infrared radiations also play important role in uh, maintaining the earth's temperature uh, and the very famous uh, use of infrared light is in our uh television remote controls so in uh, remote controls we are uh, having the remote controls of television sets made up of infrared light so uh, for to operate different uh, electrical devices we make use of this uh, infrared uh, light next are the microwaves the microwaves are produced by special vacuum tubes called uh, klystron sources magnetrons gun diodes they are produced by the method of oscillating electric currents so here the frequency range of a microwave is from 1 into 10 to the power 12 to pi into 10 to the power 9 hertz whereas the wavelength is ranging from 3 into 10 to the power 4 to 6 into 10 to the power minus 2 meter the microwaves travel with same velocity as that of light they obey all the la laws of uh, electromagnetic waves that are reflection refraction okay and uh, they can uh, even heat the object on which they are incident so using this basic property a device is made which is used for uh, uh, cooking food and uh, um, it is called as the microwave oven so it here comes the applications of uh, microwave
So here are the applications of microwave. Microwave ovens are yeah. used for cooking purpose. Microwaves are used in radar system for the location of distant objects. Uh, they are used in wireless communications also, and they are also used in the transmission of TV signal. And the last one is the radio waves. The radio waves are the electromagnetic waves with longest wavelength and lowest frequency. The method of production of uh, radio waves is by oscillating electric currents, by using um, inductance and capacitance of proper magnitude in the circuit, the frequency of the wave can be varied. The radio waves of any desired frequency can be produced by choosing suitable values of inductance and capacitance. The wavelength range of radio waves is from 6 into 10 to the power minus 2 to 1 into 10 to the power 5 meter. Whereas the frequency range is from 5 into 10 to the power 9 to 3 into 10 to the power um, 3 hertz. Now here comes the application of radio waves. They are used in wireless communication, radio broadcasting and transmission of TV signals. So these were the applications of radio waves. And these are, is all about the electromagnetic waves and its application. Okay, thank you. Arif sir. Thank you, Ifra madam. Now I request uh, Dr. Wasim to propose word of thanks. Am I audible to all? Yes. Yes, continue to talk. Thanks. Good, good evening to all of you. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Ari Patan, sir, for providing me opportunity to propose out of thanks for today's session. First and foremost, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to our respected principal and pre president of this lecture series, Dr. Mazhar Ahmed Faruqi sir, for his continuous motivation and support. I would like to thank Vice Principal, Professor Dr. M. A. Bari sir. I would like to thank the convener of this lecture series and the director of Dr. Rafiq Zakaria Center for Higher Learning and Research, Professor Dr. Ari Patan sir. I extend my thanks to coordinator of the lecture series, Professor Sayyid Sultan, sir. I would like to thank Professor Aditi Bhattacharya, ma'am, IQAC coordinator. I express my thanks to today's research resource person and my colleague, Dr. Ifra Fatima, ma'am, for delivering such an informative lecture. I am thankful to all the senior staff members and all participants for attending this session patiently. Thanks to one and all. <laughs>